Hello. Hello. So the title of today's panel is, uh, is there a chance for an uh, American initiative? So, but I'd like to start with uh, 10 years ago, because, and you can actually uh, tell us about it, the idea of taking a war in Gaza and turn it into a leverage to some kind of a new order in the region. It has happened once, right? Yes, it did. 2014, right after Protective Edge operation, the UN Security Council convened. There was a proposal, a draft on the table, that I also participated in its formation as a Minister of Justice. Netanyahu was uh, the Prime Minister. On that day, there was there the UN ambassador to the UN holding this draft. The American Secretary of State in Washington was online. Israeli ambassador in UN in the UN was waiting. And in Jerusalem, Prime Minister office, there was Prime Minister Netanyahu alongside myself. So everybody was waiting for his approval. The draft said generally the next thing. We need to make change in the long term to include gradually PA, a legitimate government will be a, a government that acknowledges Israel, stops terror and violence, and accept the previous peace um, uh, agreements. No transfer a weapon, including enforcement over smuggling, which would put a lot of burden on the Egyptians. This kind of enforcement was supposed to be done by who? Well, first of all, there was the principle of total prohibition, and there was the, um, all the countries were supposed to follow it, but it was practically relevant only to the Egyptians. The entrant, actually, the Palestinians uh, were supposed also to supervise dual equipment, and uh, yes, there was something else there, going back to a negotiation between Israel and the Palestinian Authority that accepts these three conditions. And the Israeli Prime Minister said no, and the draft is off the table. And the principle according to which what he, that, that he still clings to is that Hamas is better than PA, and it has been the principle that led us ever since then and led to this disaster. Now, when you talk about it with him, uh, what, w what was his explanation? No, he would never admit that this is his preference, but he said something along the lines of, what is it good for? And I said, this is the beginning. I'm not proposing that tomorrow we're going to have a peace process, but there is a matter of a process. We have the ability to receive uh, international legitimacy and in, in, in the Security Council. And uh, we are initiating this. The world supports us. We are marking the beginning of a process. We receive legitimacy to military actions against terror. And it ended with protective edge. And he, as always, only acts when he must act. So that just, uh, let's go back uh, in time. You were the Minister of Foreign Affairs during cast led in uh, under uh, Olmert. And you are a member of cabinet, in that time, was there a single moment, because the, we're discussing it a lot nowadays, as Netanyahu, uh, if we don't want to go back to Oslo, if you don't want to go back to, by the way, I, I, I think that we should stick to the, uh, declara the, to the Declaration of Independence and not change it. Well, there, in the rooms, where you attended these meetings, was there someone who said, if we don't take this opportunity, if we don't close uh, this thing, one day we will be forced to meet Hamas, not as the monster of October 7th, but we will meet it in a completely different way. No, it wasn't like that. We indeed, there was a, the process of uh, cast led. By the way, the perception of destroying Hamas, I have been using it ever since 2006, even before cast led, because I saw it as an obstacle and not as something that can be positive in any way. 
And that's why I asked during the operation, I asked uh, the security establishment and the chief of staff, was there a military uh, way to destroy the Hamas regime? And the answer I received was no. It's true that the commander of the command, the present, the current minister of defense, started to persuade the prime minister, uh, prime minister to go in this direction, but there were no other alternatives, plans for the day after without prior preparation with the statement that besides the uh, military campaign we have no ability to destroy the regime it hasn't been done as you know so we'll get to the Amer the current american initiative but uh, at the basis of this initiative Allegedly, there, it, it's all about a significant change in the Middle East, and uh, it's the fact that the axis formed by Iran and um, this axis that it has been developing um, is a threat not only on Israel, but on other countries that aspire for stability. It's not, they're not necessarily more moderate, but they aspire for uh, stability and this radicalism and this aggressiveness, Iranian aggressiveness in the region threatened them as well. So when did it start uh, forming into an idea uh, and, and, and an answer? Why do you use the word uh, plan or there is a proper plan on the table in Washington. It started, no, I'm asking about the beginning of this plan. Yes, well, so it, they started discussing it many years ago. That's the perception and normalization that started without the Saudis. It's also part of this thought and it includes uh, uh, aspects of development, but also security aspects. For many years, it has been under the table secretly. I, as a minister of foreign affairs, I met with counterparts besides the Saudis, counterparts of all the other Arab states. But now, now before October 7th, it formed into a, a Saudi's willingness to join the club with a very low threshold with regards to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Forgive me for interrupting you, but if there was a problem, at least according to how I see it, and may, maybe other people see it, with Abraham Accords, the problem was that it proved Netanyahu teaches that we should not touch, we don't have to touch the Palestinian uh, uh, problem, and that we can make peace with UAE, with other countries, or conduct some kind of normalization without the Palestinians being involved. Well, I've been hearing this thesis of peace for peace, but I just want to remind Netanyahu and others that in terms of the UAE and Bahrain and the rest of Arab countries, the Palestinians do not live in their backyards. They live here. And I, we are the ones who must understand that this is our interest and the fact that other countries leave them aside, do not bring up their cause. They don't care about the Palestinians. I care about the state of Israel. I want it to um, remain Jewish and democratic and safe. And the way to do it is separation from Palestinians, even if other Arab countries don't care. So maybe the biggest success of Netanyahu is actually uh, uh, making the public aware of it as if it's something that we, as if it's not something that we need. Yeah, and I understand that whatever it takes to prevent the state, the, the, the state of Israel to be dragged into another uh, crisis is just to um, uh, notify the prime minister. So I think we need to alert all the people who know what is the right thing to do for Israel. When Netanyahu, Netanyahu said there will be anything in Gaza besides PA, it actually guarantees the continuation of war. But without, but, but we will go. But, but the Hamas will go back. So it's the same preference of Hamas over PA, and it also guarantees that we're going to have big problems with the Saudis. And uh, in practice, the, this choice is a choice that between. I mean, the, 
choosing the Hamas over uh, PA is, is, is something that we do today, even if we don't, if nobody says it out li loud, and it might lead us to a, an additional disaster. Now, in an American context, context, what is on the table and why is it so urgent? Because in practice, what they try to do, they aim to do, is a hostage deal, which is, of course, a hostage deal, which is, of course, an Israeli interest. I hope that we will see them back home as soon as possible. Um, temporary ceasefire uh, through which they will be able to promote the plan in which they create a path for the PA um, um, replacing IDF when the places that IDF leaves uh, to um, advance humanitarian uh, aid and the biggest game changer here in normalization with Saudi Arabia. Now, it's true that before October 7th, the uh, Saudi threshold was very low in terms of what they expected the state of Israel to provide. But today, as a result of, the, of what we do in Gaza, the threshold is higher. But on the whole, it's also our interest because what they want from us is actually a process with the Palestinian Authority that collaborate with us at the security level, a willingness to make changes within the PA so that they will be more suitable for this mission and I would also add the what, what we had before on the table no legitimacy to any Palestinian government that doesn't uh, accept to uh, four conditions including uh, acknowledging the state of Israel I would add to that a prohibition of Hamas participating in election and taking care of UNRWA I would include the UAE into the picture as an entity that can create change in terms of education Palestinian education because really they um, they, they are opinion leaders in terms of struggle against radicalization. There is an opportunity here, and if there's a deal, and I hope there will be, afterwards there will be 40 or 45 days, and we should not miss this opportunity, because if we do, and unfortunately what's going on today is that there is an American president that make the right decisions with regard to the security of Israel, although he's paying a political price for it, and an Israeli prime minister, on the other hand, who is not willing to make the decisions. And he knows that these decisions are the right ones for Israel, but he is not willing to pay the political price for them, and that's the greatest disaster of all. And this thing must be understood. It must change. And we must stop playing the game. It's not even his game. It's the game of Smotrich and Ben Gvir who want again to weaken the Palestinian Authority, even at the price of empowering Hamas. Now, let me ask you about the American side. We'll finish soon, but I want to ask you about the Americans, because the American president you were referring to is in the midst of his election campaign. So that's why the time frame is so important. You cannot kill time. You have to make decisions. You were recently in Washington. Did you get the feeling there of urgency or some kind of a deadline that the Americans tell us, well, it's afterwards, we're not going to accept it anymore. Well, I was on a tour recently in the U.S., but mainly I, uh, I visited many universities, and you have no clue about what's going on in there. It's not as if now there is legitimacy to establishing a Palestinian state. No, Israel is losing its legitimacy, not only our right to defend ourselves, but the mere legitimacy of the existence of a Jewish state. You must understand where it's going and what what the ones uh, who represent Israel are dealing with. And uh, they say that Hamas cannot stay in power, but there are people who deny the massacre. We live in a world where reality, the truth that we know, the reality that we know, is not the reality around which the discussion is held at the campuses or in American politics. And that's why the time frame, this is not, nobody told me to say that, but the time frame is very clear, right? U.S. is uh, approaching election. If we can actually um, 
If we can make the deal within a specific period of time, including normalization with Saudi, uh, including handling the problem of Philadelphia with the Egyptians, so we will be able to answer the additional question we haven't discussed, which is Hezbollah in Lebanon. So there is an, a very complicated com uh, opportunity here and it only be uh, it can only take place under uh, Americans uh, uh, composition and Israel cannot sit idly by and when it comes to decisions that can change reality in the long term and can and should not we should not avoid making decisions for political reasons otherwise this just war the horrible prices that we pay every day will end with mm, with nothing, like other operations ended when Hamas is still um, powerful, because the disaster here is not only empowering Hamas, but the unwillingness to replace it. And in fact, now the opportunity is uh, twice as good, because first of all, there's an opportunity, because the war obtained significant military achievements, way more significant with previous operation. We went with our troops, we were willing to pay a high price. Now we are in there in the cities and we cannot leave because right now uh, we will be we're replaced by Hamas again. And the second thing is uh, indeed the ability to reach some kind of uh, regional comprehensive change together with Saudi Arabia. If we uh, give it up because of political considerations represented by a group that wants to force us into uh, reoccupation and maybe building new settlements in Gaza and inability to separate from the Palestinians, which would lead us to one state between river to the sea, which will be non-Jewish and non-democratic. It's inconceivable and unimaginable. Very few people are willing to speak about it because Netanyahu managed to make it seem as if it's unlegitimate to say this word. And my role today is to say these words here on the stage today. So it seems to me that you deserve the applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, too.